Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and today we're going to be building out this project which is a product list with a shopping cart. Now the functionality for this is going to be the shopping cart but its inspiration comes from the front end meta challenge which is called product list with cart. Now I want to mention this that we are not going to be building a pixel perfect design from the challenge but the functionality for the cart is going to work all the same. So if you want a pixel perfect design, I apologize. We are not going to be doing that in this video. We are going to, however, focus on the shopping cart, which in this case is currently empty. But when you begin to add items to it, then you can view your cart. It also updates the number of items in the cart, as you can see. And then when you view your cart, it shows you the number of items. And when you scroll to the bottom, it gives you the total for that particular cut. Now, if you don't want any of these items, you can simply clear the cut. And then if you go ahead and add items again, and if you add the same item twice, it simply just increases its number in your shopping cart. And then it updates the total as well. Now, if you have less than one item in your shopping cart, then it automatically removes that particular item. So if I click on this button again, it automatically removes it from the shopping cart. And then, of course, it updates your total value. And then, of course, this shopping cart is going to persist in local storage. So you can close this. But when you reopen it, you should still be able to see your shopping cart right around here. You can see I still have two items and we have the very same two items that I had previously in my shopping cart. So this is a very interesting project and we're going to be building it using Next.js, Tailwind CSS and Shard CN UI. So let's go ahead and begin by creating a new Next.js application. So to begin, I'm going to create a new Next.js application and I'm using PNPX as opposed to NPX. And it's very simple to install. All you need to say is npm install pnpm, npm install dash g so that it installs it globally. And then, of course, if you're on Linux or on Mac, you need to say sudo npm. Now, you don't have to use pnpm. I just prefer to use it because it's faster. So pnpm, sorry, pnpx create dash next dash app at latest. And I'm going to call this product list, product dash list with dash cut. And then I'm going to say enter. And for this project, we are not using TypeScript, so no. We want ESLint, we want Tailwind CSS, so yes. We don't want a source directory, we want the app router, we don't want TurboPack because it's still in development. And then we want the default import alias, so we're going to say no. And then we're going to let this run, and then once it finishes, then we are going to open up our application. Okay, so once that is finished, then I'm going to say CD product list with cut. And then I'm going to use Codium, Codium dot, and Codium is just a variant of VS Code without the tracking. And there we go. So we have our Next.js application right here. And using Control J to open up our integrated terminal, I'm going to say pnpm, pnpm dev. And if you're using npm, then simply say npm dev or npm run dev. That should work. So pnpm dev, which is going to open up our local development server on localhost 3000 and then we can take a look right here so localhost 3000 and there we go so we have our next js application right here now i want to go ahead and install a few things oops what was happening here so let me just go ahead and shut down our server because i want to install a few a few things and the first thing that we need to do is install shad cn or that initialize shad cn because you don't install it so pnpx shad cn at latest init so as you can see when shad cn initializes it does a few things and it detects that we're using next.js so we want to use the new york style as opposed to the default so enter and then for the base color we're going to use neutral because it's because it's going to use the colors from telling css and we're going to say yes for CSS variables. And as that is running, you can see that it creates a components.json file as well as edits the Tailwind config.js. 
so that now if I go ahead and run pmpm dev then we're going to see a few changes in our Next.js application. So let's just go ahead and reload this. And there we go. As you can see that now we no longer have the black background color. We now have this light theme. That's because Shad CN has changed a few of the styles in our tailwind CSS, as you can see right there. So we can go ahead and we want to install one more thing, which is going to help us to format our tailwind CSS classes. And it is called Prettier Plugin. Tailwind CSS so prettier plugin and this link is going to be in the description and the github repository is Tailwind Labs so the creators of Tailwind CSS created this plugin just so that it can help to format the Tailwind CSS classes so it is called prettier plugin Tailwind CSS and you can just scroll to the bottom right here and if you're using npm you can go ahead and run this command but I'm not using npm so I just want to copy this part copy and then inside my second terminal, I'm going to say pnpm add and then paste it in. And then as that is installing, I want to go ahead and copy this. So copy. And then inside my workspace, so inside the root, not inside any folder, I'm going to double click, which is going to create a new file. And I'm going to say dot prettier rc. Make sure that you get the spelling correctly. And then paste that in. And then of course, remove this comment so that you don't have any errors. So save that. And now we are actually ready to begin. So just make sure that your application is running and you can verify that. So just reload it so that you ensure that it is running and let's begin working on this. And so because what we're building is a challenge from front-end mentor, we need to go into the challenges and we need to go into the actual challenge that we want, which is the product list with cut and just go ahead and visit the challenge hub and download the starter files so that you have the starter files available for you because you want to do a bit of copying and pasting. So once you download the zip file, then you can go ahead and wherever you extract it, mine is right here on my desktop. So you can just double click it to extract it right here. And what I want to do is open up this and then open up this once again because you want to do a bit of copying and pasting so what I want to do is I want to grab everything except the git ignore. So just drag and drop everything inside here. And then when you get this alert, say copy folders, don't add folders. So copy folders so that it adds the folders for you. And this just asks, asks whether you want to, re, to replace the readme. You can simply say replace. It is safe. And there you go. So we have a bunch of new files which are coming from the front-end mentor zip file. And then what you want to do is this git ignore, I can simply drag and drop it inside here so that we see the contents of the git ignore. And you can see that it just simply ignores a bunch of files inside here. So I want to go ahead and copy this. And then inside our actual git ignore for the next yes, which is right here, we're going to go to the bottom and then paste it inside. And then we're going to change this to line 46 and 47 and then we're going to change this to line 53 so that it safely ignores all these files so that you don't commit them to your git repository so you'll notice that this has been repeated because it is usually added by next yes so you can simply remove this it is safe as well and now that we have that we are now ready to actually begin because now we have our data.json file right here now what i'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a components folder. So right inside my workspace, I'm going to create a folder here called components. So components and inside my components folder, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this products.js. And then inside products.js, I want to go ahead and import our data.json file right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say import and I'm going to call it products. So import products from oops, from art slash data dot json and because it's a, it's a json file you need to import it like so and then we're going to say export default function products and then inside here we just want to go ahead and return a div that says products and then save that and then we want to go ahead and render this component so what we're going to do is inside our app and inside our page.js, 
we want to go ahead and remove all of this and we can just say export default function home and then inside here we want to go ahead and render out our products like so so save that and let's go ahead and see what we have on the screen we can close this let's close that as well so you can see that we now have products on the screen now i want to change this font because i don't want to use this font so i'm going to say Control p which is going to open up this nice looking command palette and i want to search for the global.css file which is our main css file and for the font family here i want to remove this and i want to say at apply and we're going to use font mono which is a tailored class that applies the monospace font on your application so when you save that you'll notice that now this is a monospace font that looks much better now let's go ahead and do this back inside the page.js let's go ahead and cut this out and place it inside a div because i want to go inside this div and give it a class name here of container and padding on the x of 2 and padding on the y of 20 and mx order which is going to send it and because of the extension or rather the, the dependency that we installed which is called prettier plugin when i go ahead and save this it is going to reformat the classes so save that once again and take a look we have that i have a semicolon somewhere this one remove it and there we go looking fantastic now let's jump back into our products.js let's go ahead and render these products to the screen so what we're going to do is this we're simply going to map over them so we're going to say products dot map and then for every let me call it product then we can also get the index of the product which is going to act as our unique key we want to go ahead and return here we want to get a div and this div make sure to close it out as well this div is going to have a key of index and then inside here we're going to have an image component which is coming from next image make sure you import it and the image component takes in a source prop and the source for this is going to be product.image.desktop and i just want to mention something if you take a look at the data json you have the desktop image the tablet image and the mobile image now i don't want to go through the hassle of rendering all of them out depending on the screen sizes but it's very simple to do that all you need to do is just create uh, multiple divs or simply add a class name here on the images so for example if i wanted this to be the desktop image then all i need to do is say it's going to be hidden by default and then on large screens then it's going to show up as a block element then that just ensures that the desktop is going to show the desktop image and the mobile is going to show the mobile image and of course now you need to add the actual mobile image so you, you need to do something like mobile and then because it's mobile first then this will need to be block and actually it's block by default come on just remove this so what you can do is because you're also going to be rendering the tablet size screens then you need this to be hidden on medium screens and medium screens and upwards so it's going to be hidden on medium screens and upwards and so on and so forth so if you want to do that then you can go ahead and do that but i don't want to go through the hassle of doing that so let's just go ahead and render out our desktop image and we can remove the class names right there and the alt attribute for this one or rather the alt prop in this case is going to be the product dot name which is coming from our data json so the name of the product and then we need to give it a fixed width or that a width and in this case i want to give it a width of 1920 and a height of 1080 so that it gives us a good resolution image now when i save that you're going to notice that the images are not going to appear on the screen because it says this now the reason why it says this is because the images currently as they are they are being served outside of the public folder if i can just get them they're inside the assets so the assets folder is outside of the public folder so what i'm going to do is the svg files inside here inside the public folder i'm just going to select all of them and delete them and then inside my assets folder i'm going to drag the images folder into the public folder like so so simply drag and drop as you can see now the images are inside the public folder and then what we're going to do is inside our data json because the images are no longer inside the forward slash assets so i'm simply going to select all of this and then say Control d so that it selects 
all the other links so control d like so and then i'm going to just simply backspace so that now the images are going to be served from forward slash images because the forward slash here represents the public folder and then images is the folder in which the images are stored and then of course the image links to the jpeg files now save that and then when we hopefully reload it we should be able to see our images like so looking fantastic now let's tell this out so that it looks a bit better so inside here we're going to give it and you know what i'm doing something wrong we installed shards here so what we need to do is we're going to add a component from shards here which is going to help us to make this look a bit better so the way we, we install components is we say pnpx or if you're not using pnpm you simply say npx so pnpx and then i want to say shard cn at latest add and we want to add two components so we want to add the card component and the button component which are the two components that we're going to be using in this project so enter and then let's wait a moment and there we go and what you'll notice is if you work in you'll notice that the components folder now has a ui folder and the ui folder has the button.jsx and the card.jsx now you can take a look at these components they are very quite easy to understand and you can see also quite easy to customize if you wanted to customize them but we're not going to do any customization in this particular project so what i want to do is we're going to substitute this div for a card component and when it gives you this drop down simply say enter so that it's going to auto import it for you so we want to render the card like so now when i save that you'll notice that immediately it receives a bit of styling but it's barely visible but it gets a border now let's go ahead and add a grid to this so on this day we're going to give it a class name here and we're going to say grid and grid dash sorry grid no gap a gap of six and then on small screens we're going to say grid columns two and then on medium screens we're going to say grid sorry on large screens large screens we're going to say grid columns three and then on two xl screens we're going to say grid columns four save that and we're going to say one two three four looking much better already now let's continue to style this out so what i want to do is grab this image and place it inside a component that is called card header and make sure that you import it as well and then paste in our image so that now the image is going to be pushed inwards and then on the image i want to go ahead and add a class name here and i'm going to say width dash full and i'm going to say rounded dash large so save that so that it's going to receive a rounded border right here and then below the image and below the card header we're going to add a component here that is called card content and inside card content i want to go ahead and add card description so card description and the card description is going to say product dot category was it category let me just confirm here yes category so the category first and then below the card description we're going to have the card title and the card title is going to say product of name and then once again below the card title we're going to have card description which is going to say the product dot price save that and we should have something here card title is not defined so i forgot to import it so right here simply say control spacebar and then say enter and it's going to auto import it on top so save that and we should see that there we go looking much better now see how the price is formatted wrongly let's go ahead and fix that so what we need to do is this first of all we need to add a dollar sign here and then on the price we want it to be up to two decimal places so we're going to say dot two fixed and then pass in two as the number of decimal places so save that and now we should see there you go much better formatted now let's go ahead and do this inside the card content i want to add a class name here called space dash y dash two which is going to separate out these items just a bit so that it looks like so so right below the header or rather the card header let's go ahead and add a button which we have just installed from shard cn make sure that you import it so the button here is going to say add cart save that and we're going to have a button right there which i have 
formatted wrongly let me place it inside the cut header and that should do that there we go so add to cut and then let's add a nice looking icon here and the icon is called shopping cart so shopping cart right there now you should be able to add this in just as i have added it in so import shopping cart from lucid react and the reason why you should be able to do that is because when we install shad cn and we used the new york style it auto automatically installed lucid react for us so if you go ahead and take a look at your package json why is this open and this as well i don't need many of this to be open and we can safely delete the fonts file we're not using this font anyway so just delete it now inside the package json you'll notice that lucid react is installed here as well so when you install shad cn with the new york style it installed lucid react and if you use the default style then it should install radix icons that's well that's i think that's what it should do hopefully now let's go ahead and do this let's see save that our ui is basically complete what we need to do is add our div here which shows products and then a cut button here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab this entire div cut it out and say create a section here paste in the div and then above this section rather above the div i'm going to create another div with an h1 that says products and then below this h1 i'm going to create a button here from shard cn that says cut and then inside here we're going to display the length of items so just have a brackets length so that we remember to do it right here and then of course let's go ahead and style it out so the h1 is going to have a class name here of font dash bold and text dash 3xl and then on the div we're going to have a class name here that says flex flex wrap items center justify between and gap gap really gap dash four just in case you have a very small screen and the products here if you go to inspect you can try to test it out so on such a screen if you were to go less than this then the cut here is automatic at automatically going to go into the next line now let's also add a margin bottom so that this pushes away from the items just a bit so on this div let's just say margin bottom of eight and there we go that looks nice nice so what we need to do next is we need to go ahead and implement our buttons now in order to do that then i'm going to use the context api so let's go ahead and do that right away so close all these folders we can safely close all of these as well and what i'm going to do is once again inside the workspace i'm going to create a new folder called context and then inside context i'm going to create a new file called cart.js now inside cart.js this is what we're going to do remember that next.js is server rendered by default but we want to use context which only applies to client components so we're going to add a directive here called use client like so and then we're going to say import create context from react we also want to import use state because we want to manage some state and use effect as well because we want to read from local storage and once we do that then we're going to say this export const cart context is equal to create on text and then we're going to actually create our component so i'm going to say export const cart provider is equal to and then my brackets and then create my component right here and then inside here we're going to return something but for now let me just leave it as so but we want to go ahead and restructure the children because the cart provider is going to be wrapping all other components which are going to be the children so inside our return we are going to return the cart context which i've just created inside here which gives us access to the provider so cut context dot provider and then inside the cut context provider we want to go ahead and pass in the children now for our cut we are going to have four main functions now the first function is going to be the add to cut button so or that the add to cut function so const add to cut then this is an arrow function close it out and then just copy this down four more times the second function we're going to create is remove from cut so remove from cut and then the third function is to clear cut 
so clear the cut and then the fourth function is get cut total and then let's go ahead and pass them in as a value here and the value here is going to say we're going to say add to cut we are passing it in as a, an object and then remove from cut and then clear cut and then get cut total now we can go ahead and save that and hopefully nothing should break but before we exit this file let's go ahead and pass in our state value so our state value is going to say const cut items and set cut items and by default we're going to say use state and by default it's going to be an empty array now let's go ahead and save that and i just want to make sure that context is working so i want to go ahead and pass it in inside our layout so what we're going to do is this inside our app folder we have a layout.js so inside this file we're going to go ahead and wrap the children here using the cart cart provider so and then wrap the children and then now if we go ahead and jump into our components folder and inside products.js then we should be able to use the functions so for example i can say const and destructure this so add to cart is equal to use context and then pass in the cart context so and i'm auto importing them that's why you can see that they're being added by default or they're added automatically and then now if i want to test this out then i can say console.log type of add to cart and in the console we should see function now remember that because we're now using a hook inside here then we need to transform this into a client component so use client now save that and then if we inspect so inspect then make this bigger inside our console we should see function right there so our context is working as we expect it to work okay so now that we have verified that that is working let's go ahead and actually create our cut component and you can see that i'm dealing with the ui part first before we deal with the functionality so let's go ahead and inside our components folder we're going to create a new file called cut.js and don't confuse this with what you have inside the context so this is the context and this is the component that renders the cut now inside here we're going to say the following we're going to say export default function cut and then inside here we're going to say return and we're going to return a div and then inside this div we're going to have an h2 that says your cut and then this h2 is going to have a span that says close which is going to be our close button and you know what i can use an icon here called x icon which comes from lucid Re react as well now i don't want this to be a span actually i want this to be a button so button which renders the the icon now save that and let's jump back inside the products because we want this cart and we can remove the console log we want the cart to render below this final div right below the section before the section ends and we want to render cart like so close it out and we should see it right here now of course we don't want it to be here we want it to be positioned fixed right on the top left so let's go ahead and do that back inside our cut we're going to give this div a class name and we're going to say fixed and we're going to give it a width of full so a width of 9 over 12 which is three quarters and then we're going to say bg neutral dash 900 and then we're going to give it a height of screen so that it takes up the entire height of the screen and then we're going to give it a padding on the y of 10 and the padding on the x of 4 save that and we should see it somewhere right right somewhere but you know what it is behind it so let's give it an inset of zero which should bring it forward and there we go so this is how the cut looks like on mobile and you might think that it stretches out but it doesn't because 9 over 12 is a percentage width so it will always take up 75 percent of the device width so when you're on mobile this is how it's going to look like as you can see and then when you're on desktop we don't want it to look like this so let's go ahead and add a media query here and we're going to say that on medium screens then the width is going to be 
500 pixels so and save that and this is our cut right there and then of course we need to style this out so that we can actually see the h1 rather the h2 so give this a class name here of font dash bold text dash white and text dash 2xl and then let's give it a class name of flex as well and item center justify as between between and flex dash prop and then gap of four like so and there we go so your cut and then i don't want this button to look like this it's a bit too small rather not really too small but i want it to be a bit more prominent so what i'm going to do is because we're using shad cn we can give the button a variant here and i want to give it a variant of secondary which is going to give it a white background as you can see right there now if you open up this file the ui and then button.jsx these are the variants that you can use so default destructive outline secondary ghost and link and these are the styles that it is going to apply now if you don't like how a button looks like here all you can do is just simply change the styles and if you want to create your own custom button what you can do is just create like custom button here and then pass in your own style so bg red 500 for example and if i save that and then pass in my variant here called custom button then you'll notice that it takes up the custom styles that i've just passed in okay but i don't want that so let's give it a variant of secondary like so save that and then you can delete this because we're not using it now the next thing that we need to do is display our cut items but we can't really do that without the function to add to cut so let's go ahead and create that function first of all so what we're going to do is back inside our context now remember we are now in cut yes and in the context we want to go ahead and implement this function right here and you know what i just noticed cut items also needs needs to be passed in and i've just noticed that cut items also needs to be passed to context because we're going to be mapping over the cut items so that they can be displayed in our cut so let's just add it inside here so cut items and then let's go ahead and implement our first function inside here let me separate them out and now for our add to cut function we are going to have a parameter of the product which i'm going to call item so we want to add an item to the cut depending on that particular item that we click on so what we're going to do therefore is this first of all we want to check whether the item is already in the cut and if it is then we simply want to increment the value or the quantity that is in the cut so let me add a comment here that says check if the item is already in the cut and then we make this capital grammar because it's bothering me so we're going to do this we're going to say const is item in cut so just creating a variable here so const is item in cut and then we're going to do this we're going to say cut items which is our array inside here dot find so cut items sorry dot find so we want to find whether the item which is our parameter is already in the cut so cut items dot find and for every cut item that we get back we want we want to go ahead and check whether the cut item dot name whether the name is equal to the item dot name that is already in the cut now if this matches with this then it's going to increment the value in the cut now where is this coming from it is coming from our data.json file right here so we are getting the name now i do want to mention this that this is a small project where there is no name that conflicts with another however on bigger projects you'll find that there are products which have the same name so i don't recommend that you use the name the only reason that i'm using the name here is because it's a small project and there are no products that conflict however on bigger projects i recommend that you create a custom id for every product that you're going to have and then use the id instead because you can ensure that the id is unique so const item is item in cut now if the item exists in the cut so we're going to check if is item in cut if it exists then we want to do the following we want to say set cut items into cut items dot map and then for every cut item that you get back then we're going to say this we're going to say cut item dot name 
is equal to item dot name and if this is true then we have to go ahead and say pass in the cut item meaning pass in the cut item already in the cut and then once we do that then we want to increment the quantity so we're creating a key here called quantity and i say cut item dot quantity quantity plus one so increase it by one and then if it doesn't exist meaning this is a tertiary operator so if it doesn't exist then we simply want to render or rather to to add the cut item to our to our cut okay now if i save that it's going to format it a bit better so that it is more readable so simply what we're doing is because that this has evaluated to draw meaning the item is already in the cut then what we're doing here is we're mapping over the cut items and then we are checking whether the name the, the names match and then if the names match then we are getting the cut items already in the cut and then simply increasing the quantity by one and then if it does not exist in the cut then simply adding the cut item to the cut so that is what is happening inside here now we need an else statement here so make sure that you go where this block ends for our else statement and our else statement is going to be this we're going to say set cut items and we're going to pass in an array inside here where we're just simply going to say dot 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 cut items and then we're going to pass in a spread operator once again item dot quantity sorry item dot quantity and set it equal to one uh, sorry what am i doing plus one now when we save that then our add to cut function should be working and we've already passed it inside our context so what you can do is inside our products we can go inside our button here which is our add to cut button and we can add an on click on it and then on click we're going to call the add to cut function remember it is an inline function so add to cut and then we want to pass in the product because the product in this case is our parameter which we called item in our cut now let's go ahead and get this function oh i already imported it when i was doing the demonstration so that's okay now save that and when i click on this button it should work okay now it is working so we already know that we have some cut items because we were adding them when i clicked the add to cut button so you can click them once again just to verify now what you can do is we can also get the cut items from here and then you can say cut items cut items dot length and that should give us the number of items as you can see we have 12 items so that means that our cut is already being filled now if i click on it once again you can see that it's been increased but we're going to implement a functionality where if the item is already in the cut then it shouldn't increment the value inside here now let's go ahead and do this because we already have cut items now we can jump back into our cut which is the component now we're back inside the component and then we can destructure we can go ahead and say use context so const cut items is equal to use context and then pass in cut context like so and then let's go below the h2 we're going to create a div inside here and we're going to say cut items dot map and i'm going to say that for every item that we get back also get the index and on let me just call it product just to be in line with the other one so we're going to go ahead and render out a card once again with the key of index and then inside here we're going to render out a card header actually do we need the card header probably so card header and then inside the card header we're going to render out an image image from next image make sure that you import it the source for this is going to be product dot image dot thumbnail now we're using the thumbnail image because this is just to view the product and then the alt attribute is going to say product dot name and then the width for this is going to be 40 the height is going to be 40 the class name is going to say rounded dash large now let's save that let's see whether we have something on our cut and it reloaded so let's try to add something and it says reading thumbnail so i'm getting 
the path name wrongly let's check out data json so dot image dot thumbnail that should be correct product dot image dot thumbnail why is it getting it wrongly let me say desktop let me see whether it gets that desktop add to cut okay so it's not getting that correctly let me see let me see let me take this back to thumbnail and then let me go ahead and console log the cut items so that i see what is being logged to the console and not this should be use client so use client on the top save that and reload and let's inspect let's check inside our console so we have an array of zero items and when i click add to cut mm -hmm. something is wrong you know what let me test this out let me remove the console log let's add a cut title here that says product of name and then let's disable this image save that once again let me add to cut okay so wait a minute hmm. the product name is not being added name let me see so it's still not being added that's quite curious okay you know what i just noticed that i misspelled this this should be quantity let's save that let's try it again add to cut still not adding the name these people are now becoming annoying mm. okay so i seem to get to be getting an error here that i don't understand hmm cut items dot map yeah, product we're getting cut items hmm it seems like i must have messed up in uh, hmm. let me add an error boundary here let me say if there are no cut items then let's return a div div dvi a div that says add items to your cut just to see whether it's working so I don't have that that kind of error bond let's see hmm. that doesn't seem to work anyway let's just remove it let's see okay let me try and do this let me shut down my server here delete the dot next folder and then let's say pnpm dev again which is going to regenerate that dot next folder and then let's reload our application and then let's try it out still getting the same error okay so i seem to have messed up the function somewhere and i fixed it by copying and pasting from my repository but i still didn't detect where the error was but what i can do is just superimpose them so that you can see the the actual change because it's easy to see differences so i think i'm just going to superimpose the previous one and the one that i copied so that you are going to be able to see the change that was made but now if you go ahead and try it out then you can add items to your cart as you can see right there now we have our thumbnail image as well as the name and then when you try to add the same item twice then the length here does not increase however the quantity increases but we have not implemented that yet so let's go ahead and do that now back inside our cut which is inside the components we're going to do the following we don't want this to be here anymore but we want to style out our card a bit so let's give it a class name here of bg neutral dash 800 which is going to give it that color right there and then let's give it the border neutral dash 900 actually it should have done the opposite is it this should be 900 and then this should be 800 
that it oops no border neutral 700 and then bg neutral 800 that should be it there you go and then for the card title here let's give it a class name and not i think i can just do it for the entire card we're just going to say text white so that everything inside is going to have a white text and then let's do this let's see we need it to push away from that text so on this div i'm going to give it a class name of margin top of eight and then when you add other items you can see how it looks it doesn't look all that well so let's give it a space dash y of four which is going to separate them out by adding an equal margin and then let's also reduce the i think the size should be okay but let's increase the width and height of the images to 60 so 60 and then let's take a look much better and then for this we're going to go ahead and do the following we're going to move it from here cut it out and then we're going to go inside or rather below the card header we're going to say card content and then of course make sure to auto import it or that rather to import it on the top i'm using auto imports that's why you're not seeing me typing all this out so we have the card title and then below the card title we're going to have a ul with two list items or the three list items and this first one is going to be a button with a variant of secondary and another prop here called size of small and this button is just going to say minus and then let's copy this button copy it paste it on the third list item here and this is going to say plus so plus and then this list item in the middle is going to say product dot quantity save that and we should see there we go so i click this four times that's why it has a quantity of four and you can see and so on and so forth so inside the ul we're going to give it a class name here of flex items center and gap dash two which is going to do that and then on the card content we're going to give it a class name of space dash y dash two which is going to separate out the items here because on the bottom we want to display the price so below the ul we're going to give it a card description that says product dot price so the price of the product really and then we're going to do the same thing that we did for this so we're going to say dollar sign first of all and then dot two fixed and we want two decimal places like so that looks much much better and i've just noticed that in the demo the price was here on the right now you can do that simply by grabbing this and placing it inside the card title and then using flexbox if you want but even this looks okay for me now when you add multiple items see how you can't scroll the cut let's fix that so in the cut what we're going to do is right here we're going to give it an overflow overflow y of auto on the y-axis and when you save that then it automatically introduces a scroll bar very simple because we already have a fixed height where is it where is it where is it all right here we already have a fixed height so when you add overflow y auto then it automatically introduces a scroll bar now you can add items oh sorry not this needs to be the add to cut button or the function so let's go ahead and implement it so on the plus button right here we want to say on click then we want to call our inline function called add to cut add to cut like so and then pass in the product because that is the parameter and then let's go ahead and get it from use context so add to cut save that now we can safely add items to the cut but we can't remove them so let's go ahead and implement our remove from cut function so back inside our cut.js context we're going to implement implement this second function and this one is also going to take in a parameter called item and we're going to do something similar right here so once again we want to check whether the item is in the cut so we can safely copy this let me copy the comment as well because it's basically the same thing and then what we want to do here is something slightly different so we want to check if the quantity is equal to one and you click the minus button 
then it removes that item from the cart. So that's what we want to do. So if the quantity is equal to one, then remove the item from the cart. Now, how do we do that? It's very simple. So we're going to say if is item in cart dot quantity is equal to one. So if the item in the cart has a quantity of one, then what one what we want to say is set cart items into cart items dot filter and for every cut item that we get back then we're going to say cut item dot name is not equal to the item dot name so item dot name comes from right here now what this does basically is it returns every other item which is not equal to the item that we click on now for our else statement this is what we're going to do so else and we're going to say if the quantity is greater than one then simply subtract it so if the quantity is greater greater than one then subtract one so that is what we want to implement right here in the else statement so we're going to say this so set cut items and then we're going to say cut items map and then for every cut item then we want to go ahead and say this once a cut item dot name is equal to the item dot name if this is true and then let's also add in our false right away because the false is easier we simply want to get the cut item but for the if it is true then we want to say add in our curly brackets and then a spread operator we want to pass in the cut item and then we want to pass in the quantity and the quantity here is going to say cut item dot quantity minus one so simply remove one and there we go now save that and it should format it for you if you have a formatter such as i do because i'm using prettier now let's go ahead back inside our cut.js and then let's get the remove from cut function from our context and then in our button right here i'm going to add an on click and i'm going to pass in an inline function oops what am i doing so an inline function here and i'm going to say remove from cut and then pass in the product now save that let's go ahead and test it out so add to cut add to cut and then add multiple items so when i click on this it should take a one and there we go and then when i reach one then it should automatically remove this if i click on it again and there we go and there we go looking fantastic so our functionality for the cart is working it is working so let's go ahead and implement our function to clear the cart all of it so that's very very simple all you need to do is just say set cart items back into an empty array which was the original value of our state value right on top so simple as that save that let's implement it so right below let's go let's go where let's go below below this let's have a button here with a variant of destructive so destructive and then on click we're going to say clear cut so clear cut and then this is just going to say clear cut for the text and then it's going to have an icon here called trash to so trash to from from lucid react as you can see and then of course let's go ahead and get our function called clear cut save that and then let's test it out oops that should not be here <laughs> it should not be there i added it in the wrong place so cut this out from here it should be inside the cut.js so cut.js let's go below this and then we need to remove this from here because we don't need it and we can auto import this and save that so let's go ahead and get this function let me see if i can get it okay but i can get this so trash icon let's go ahead and say clear cut here so clear cut save that and let's test it out and okay i don't want it to be on each individual item so once again i've messed that up so let's grab this button and place it outside of our map 
let me see where this ends begins right here so we can place it outside of this save that okay there we go and then on this div you know what on this second div we can give it a margin y so margin top and bottom of eight which is going to push away the cut right there so when i clear this when i click this button it should clear the cut but it doesn't clear the cut let's see why so clear cut i need to call the function go save that and clear cut and there we go so clear cut and what we need to do is we need to add a check so that if you don't have items in your cart then this doesn't show and so what we're going to do is this right we're going to go ahead and cut out this button and then we're going to add a check and say if cut items at length is greater than zero so if this is true then we want to go ahead and show our clear cut button and then if it is false we're going to also have a check inside here but let's deal with the true statement first so we're going to have a div inside here and then close it out and then this div is going to have a class name of class name of space dash y dash four and then inside this div we're going to have a card title so card title and this is going to show the total and the total in this case is going to be dollar sign and get cut total which is a function that we have not yet implemented so we're going to do it we're going to implement it so no worries and then below the card title we're going to have our button that says clear cut and then in our else statement here we're going to have a div once again a div close it out and then inside this div we're going to give it a class name of space dash y dash four oops and then inside this div we're going to have the following we're going to have a paragraph that says add items to your cart to see them here dot 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 and then below this paragraph we're going to have a button with a variant here of secondary and then when you click on this button it's going to toggle a function which i have not yet created so let's just leave it as empty for now but then the text is going to say browse products okay so let's go ahead and save that let's see so there we go of course this needs to be text white so class name text white white there we go so add items to your card to see them here and then browse products so the functionality for browse products should be to close our cart as well as this one but we have not yet implemented that so let's not deal with it just yet so get cut total is not defined let's go ahead and fix that so let's implement our function let's go back into our context so inside context inside get cut total we are going to do the following we're going to say simply return and we want to return cut items dot reduce we want to re we want to use the reduce method and then we're going to pass in the total so we're going to have a total and then we're going to pass in the item and then we're going to say that the total plus item dot price oh sorry item dot price times item dot what am i typing item dot quantity and then we're going to pass in an initial value of zero so basically what is happening is we have an initial value of zero because we are assuming that we don't have any items in the cart so the total is going to be zero by default but then when you begin to add items to your cart then we're going to get the price times the quantity which is going to give the total for that particular item and then it's going to add it to the total of all the other items because now it is no longer going to be zero because when you add an item then that total is added here and then when you add another item then it is computed to get the total of all the items so that is what is happening inside here save that now let's try it again so add to cut and get total is not defined because i have not imported it uh, i've not destructured it rather so get add total save that and let's try it again there you go so we have seven and then we have 15 okay so that is working let's just fix it so that it looks 
better visible so inside the card title give it a class name of text white and then save that and let's see add a bunch of items you can see that it's adding items as we expected to add items but something that is happening is i still want it to have two decimal places so what we're going to do is right at the end of this function we're going to say dot two fixed to two decimal places like so i think that looks much much better okay now let's see what is left to implement we need to go ahead and implement local storage so back inside our context let's begin to implement local storage so right below our get cut total function we're going to do the following let me add a comment here that says persist persist state in local storage and we're going to call our use effect and the use effect inside here is going to have a dependency called cut items because we want local storage to be updated every time that the cut items changes and we know that it changes when you add an item to your cart so what we're going to do is local storage dot set item and we want to set item called cut items and we want to say json dot stringify and we want to stringify the cut items like so and then we're going to call another use effect and in this case the use effect is going to have an empty dependency array because we only want it to run once when the component renders and this is just going to check whether we have items in local storage so we're going to say const cut items is equal to local storage dot get item and we are getting the item remember we set the item first so now we're getting it and we're getting it we called it cut items and then we're going to say if cut items exists so if it is in local storage then what we want to do is say set cut items into json.pass so and then we want to go ahead and pass in cut items as a parameter so what is simply happening is we're checking whether cut items exist in local storage and then if it exists then we want to pass our state value to have the initial value of the items in local storage now when you save this it's still not going to work because you can add an item here okay let's reload it so okay then what am i doing reload it okay cannot access cut items before initialization and you know what this is wrong it should be cut items it should be a string it should be a string so just simply change this into a string like so and there we go so now you can add items to your cart but if you reload it then the item still disappear so let's go ahead and fix that so the way we do that is back inside our state value we no longer pass in the initial value of an empty array inside here but we check for local storage first so we can say local storage dot get item and then we want to get the item called card items and then if this exists then we want to say json pass and then we want to go ahead and say local storage dot get item and it's called card items and then if it doesn't exist then simply return an empty array like so now we can go ahead and save that and then let's try it out once it reloads add to cut add to cut and then reload it and we still have items in our cart so that is working correctly but let's update the document title so inside our layout let's go ahead and say front end mentor product list cut and then copy this and add it in as the description save that okay now we are left with one thing to implement and it is the close button right here so let's go ahead and let's jump inside our products.js and inside products i want to go ahead and add a state value here so i'm going to call this state value const let me call it show cut and set show cut and then this is going to be called to use state and by default it's going to be false 
because we don't want to be able to see our cut by default. Now, once we have our state value, then let's go ahead and add a, a short circuit render here. And we're going to say that only when show cut is true, that's when we want our cut to be visible, which should make it disappear now because it is false by default. So use state is not defined because I forgot to import it. So simply right here, control spacebar and then enter and it auto imports it. And now we should not see our cut by default, as you can see. And then I want that when you click on this button, then our cut should show. So the button is right here. So I'm going to say on click, then pass in an inline function that says set show cut into true. And when you save that, then I can click on our cut right here and it opens up our cut. So that looks fantastic. And you know what? Let me make this better. Let me create a function here called toggle. And our function is going to be the following. So const toggle is going to be an arrow function like so. And we're simply going to say set show cut into the opposite of show cut, meaning when you click on it, if it is true, then make it false. And if it is false, then make it true. So let's simply go ahead and pass in this custom function, uh, which we've already done so that now I can save that. And when I click on this button, it shows the cut. And when I click on it again, it makes it disappear. So that is looking correct. And then what we simply need to do is implement the functionality for these two buttons. So what I'm going to do is pass in the toggle function here as a prop. So the toggle prop is going to be equal to the toggle function. And then I can go ahead and jump inside this cut component and then destruct it as a prop because the function is called toggle. And then on this button, I'm going to add an on click because this is our close button. So on click, pass in the function that is called toggle. And then on the browse products as well, where is it? Right here, pass in a function. So on click. So on click, pass in a function that is called toggle once again. So let's try it out. Let's see whether it works. So open our cut, close it, open it again and close it. There we go. Looking fantastic. And I think with that, we are done with the project. We should be done with the project. I can't seem to to tell whether I forget anything, but if I have, then you can just leave it down in the comments or you can rather try to implement it yourself. So I think with that we are ready to submit our project. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's jump into Frontend Mentor. Let's jump into Netlify, app.netlify. And then we can close this. So instant front end meta and you know what? We need a GitHub repository as well. So GitHub repository. Let's create a new repository here. And let me call it, let's call it Next.js. You, you know what? Mm, Next.js product list with cut. And then it's going to be a public repository. So create it. And then let's copy this link. And then because I don't want to type out a lot of things, I just want to add one massive commit. So let me say git, so, uh, git add all, git commit dash m, and say product list with cut challenge complete. And then git remote add origin, and then paste in the link that I copied. And then git push dash u origin main which is going to push it to the main repository. We can close all these files and shut that down as well. And when you reload this, then this is the repository if you want a reference. That looks quite, quite nice. Now let's go ahead and deploy this. So add a new site from an existing project. And this is coming from GitHub. And it is called Next.js product list. That should be able to search. <clears throat> okay. 
there we go so the site name is da 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 site name let me call it tsp subscribe product list with cart check there we go and pnpm run build publish the dot next and that should be okay we don't have any env variables so that should be okay so deploy and hopefully we don't have any errors but let's go ahead and copy this link from github let's jump into frontend mentor into challenges let's get the challenge right here let's go ahead and say visit challenge hub and then let's go ahead and say submit solution and the solution title is product list with part in next js and the context api the repository url is that one the live site url is still deploying but what they call it i called it https tsp product list with art dot netlify dot app and i can't submit this without this deploying otherwise it's going to generate an error i think so we have to wait so let me just check this out that took longer than expected oops so i have a build failure let's check it so it says build command field why did it fail why did you fail so it says local storage is not defined so this is an issue with next.js because it's server rendered by default and local storage needs the client to be able to operate so let's go ahead and fix that i hope i remember how to fix it but let me go ahead and check it out so in order to fix the error about local storage let's do a bit of refactoring so let's go ahead and create a function here so let me call it const get local storage and this is going to be an arrow function and then i'm going to say this because next yes is server rendered so let's make sure that we are on the client first so let's say if type of window is not equal to undefined so if that is true and then we're going to have our else statement and our else statement is going to be very simple so let's add it first so we just want to simply return an empty array but in our if statement we want to say let cart items is equal to local storage local storage dot get item and we are calling it cart items and then if cart items exists then we want to say return json dot parse and then we're going to say local storage dot get item and then pass in the cart items so basically what we did inside here and then let's remove this entire thing and then let's initialize our use state to use get local storage instead now i hope this will work i don't know whether it will work but hopefully so let's say git add all git commit dash m and then let's say fix local storage error and then git push and that should trigger a redeploy on netlify so let's check it out let's say site overview and it should yeah so it's rebuilding so let me hope that it fixed that error and there we go so you can see that now it is finished and let's go ahead and open production deploy and we should see our application right there which has immediately crashed really <laughs> currently properties really really it's going to crash because of uh okay so we need to add quite a few error boundaries here why does it do that where's the length where's the length this is the cut i need the products so cut items dot length so let's simply say when cut items is true that's what we want that to render so save that once again git add all git commit let's say 
add error boundary and then get push now what i want to do is i don't want to drag the video any longer because it's going to trigger a redeploy anyways so what i'm going to do is just simply submit this but it might not get the correct screenshot so let me just go ahead and risk it so submit solution and then if it doesn't get the correct screenshot i'm just going to fix the error and then generate another screenshot from it but let's see so my solution of course it doesn't as you can see it doesn't okay that's an issue let's see redeploys again okay so i'm still getting a few errors with my deploy and i'm trying to fix them but for now we can see that the application is working on localhost so if i manage to fix it then i'm just simply going to append it to the end of the video or i'm just going to create another like one minute two minute video showing how i fixed the error but for now i just want to leave it at that because it is quite late and i am also a bit tired so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video Bye bye